This is part two of exercise for session four from function chapter of Aryan's differential calculus. In this video, I have solved next five sums from the same exercise that is from question number eight to twelve. Those who have not seen the previous solution of the problems from the same exercise, please see the previous videos. Link of those videos are given in the description box. All new visitors are requested to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified about my new upload videos. Don't forget to like and share the video to those who need it the most. Leave any comment for suggestion or solve your doubts by mentioning the name of the book and sum number in the comment section. Or you can send any doubt by clicking its pic in my WhatsApp number. Let's jump directly in solving problems. To define the function, we know that for cos inverse x, x always lies between minus 1 and 1. Now, if x is positive, if we know, then we will say that x is lying between 0 and 1, correct? Now, you observe this function before the root sign. For this part, before the root sign, it is positive. Therefore, this part of the function lies between 0 and 1. Is it clear? Okay. Now, let me just do it fairly. This is the first condition. The second condition is to define the function. The third condition, the base for log is box x. So your box x has to be greater than 0 and box x cannot be equals to 1. And the fourth condition is, okay, now, mod x by x is greater than 0 implies x is greater than 0. Is it clear? Now, from the third condition, we are getting box x is greater than 0 means your box x can take the value 1, 2, 3 and so on. But it has already been said that your box x cannot be equals to 1. Therefore, we can write box x is greater than equals to 2 implies x is greater than equals to 2. Is it clear? Now, x is greater than equals to 2, x is greater than 0. These two conditions are satisfied by x is greater than equals to 2. Is it okay? Let us move for the second condition. From here, we can write that mod x by x will be greater than equals to box x to the power 0. You observe carefully, I have not changed the sign. Why it is so? Because we know that x is greater than equals to 2. That is why I have not changed the sign. Therefore, we are having mod x by x is greater than equals to 1, which is always true for x is greater than equals to 2. Is it clear? Now let us come for the first condition. So from here we can write, with the same logic I have not changed the sign because your box x is greater than equals to 2. That is x is greater than equals to 2. Now you observe, for x is greater than equals to 2, this condition is satisfied. x is greater than equals to 2, any value you choose, mod x by x will give you 1 which is always less than equals to 2 or higher values. Is it clear? So, x is greater than equals to 2 is satisfying all these four conditions. Therefore, the required domain is x belongs to close to open infinity. Is it clear? So, this is the required domain. Let us move for the next problem. To define the function, the expression under the root sign has to be greater than or equals to 0, right? So, here we are having two cases. Case 1, when 
when both of them are positive then their ratio is also positive so this is case one and for case two if both are negative then the ratio is positive let us consider first case one from the first one we are getting x is greater than equals to one and from the second one we are having x can be written as box x plus fractional part of x is it clear now when x is greater than equals to one this condition will satisfy yes or no because we know that fractional part of x always lies between 0 and 1. Therefore, any value which is more than 1, your box 6 will be always greater than equals to 1. Box 6 is always greater than equals to 1 when x is greater than equals to 1. Therefore, 1 will be always more than the fractional part that is which is lying between 0 and 1. Therefore, this condition is satisfied by all the values lying between 1 till infinity. Is it clear? Let us consider the second case. Now again from this calculation we can say, is it clear? Now you observe, if x is equals to 1, will it satisfy this? If x is equals to 1, your box x gives you 1 and your fractional part gives you 0. So, 0 is not greater than 1. Therefore, x cannot be equals to 1. That's for sure. Now, if x is less than 1 and greater than 0, in that case, your box x will give you 0 and fractional part of x will give you the value which x will have, right? Which is definitely greater than 0. So, in that case, your box x is less than fractional part of x will satisfy. So, x lying between 0 and 1 fulfills this condition. Moreover, if I take x equals to 0, then box x becomes 0 and fractional part of x becomes 0. Again, 0 is not less than 0. Therefore, x cannot be equals to 0. Now, if x is less than 0, think about it. If x is less than 0, then your box of x will always give you a negative integer and your fractional part of x will give you some value which is greater than 0. Is it clear? Is it clear to everyone? Therefore, x is less than 0 again fulfills this condition. Right? So, from here we can say that your x is less than 1 greater than minus infinity except 0 will satisfy this condition. Is it clear? Therefore, the final domain for this function will be x belongs to minus infinity to 0 or 0 to 1 or 1 till infinity, right? So, combining this, we can say that x belongs to any real value except 0. Is it clear? So, this is the required domain for the given function, right? Okay, let us move for the next problem. To define the function, we know that for sine inverse x, x always lies between minus 1 and 1. Therefore, in the given function, box x by fractional part of x lies between minus 1 and 1. Now, one thing for sure, your x does not belongs to any integer. Because if x is an integer, the fractional part of x becomes 0 and the function becomes undefined. Now, let us choose this portion to solve the inequation first. Then we will take the second part, this portion, to solve it. So, from the first one, from this one, we are saying that box of x is less than equals to fractional part of x. Now, observe carefully, in an inequation, I have cross multiplied. I have cross multiplied because here, fractional part of x is greater than 0. Fractional part of x is always greater than 0. That is why we have cross multiplied it. Is it clear? Now, 
In this case, we have to consider three cases. One, if x is less than 0. Number two, when x is lying between 0 and 1. And number three, when x is greater than 1. Now, when x is less than 1, look it carefully. Your box of x will give you some negative integer. But fractional part of x, as it is always greater than 0, so this inequation is satisfied for all x less than 0. Is it clear? Therefore, the first condition satisfies the given inequality. Let us consider the second case when x is lying between 0 and 1. Again, your box of x will give you, in this case, 0. But fractional part of x, again, it is greater than 0. So, this condition also fulfills this inequation. Right? Now, let us consider any value which is more than 1. If x is greater than 1, look it carefully. Your box x will give you some value which starts from 1, 2, 3 and so on. But your fractional part of x always lies between 0 and 1. Right? So, the integer value can never be less than the fractional value. Therefore, this third condition will not satisfy this inequation. So, from here we can write that your x belongs to minus infinity to 1. Is it clear? Except 0. And all other integers in the given range minus infinity to 1. Is it clear to all of you? Okay. Let us come for the next set. From the second set we are getting, again with the same argument I have cross multiplied because fractional part of x is always greater than 0. So from here we are getting, right, because x can be written as box x plus fractional part of x. Now from here we are getting that x is greater than or equals to 0. But as x cannot be an integer, so from here we can write x belongs to 0 to infinity. Now, the final domain for this function, which will satisfy this condition as well as this condition. So, the common region which is coming is, x belongs to 0 to 1. Is it clear to all of you? Therefore, the required domain for the given function is, x belongs to 0 to 1. Okay, let us move for the next problem. Now, to define this function, box of 2x square minus 3 must lie between minus 1 and 1. Because as I told you that for sine inverse x, x always lies between minus 1 and 1, correct? So, from here we can write, because we know again, box of x plus any integer can be written as box of x plus integer. So, from here we are having, is it clear? Now, box of 2x square can take the values 2, 3 or 4. That is, as box of 2x square is 2, 3 or 4, therefore, 2x square will be greater than equals to 2, less than 5. Is it clear? So, from here we can write that x square is lying from 1 to 5 by 2. So, from here we can write, is it clear? And that will be the required domain for this given function. Therefore, we can write it as x belongs to, is it clear? Have you understood the problem? Okay. Let us move for the next one. In this function to define, again, box of log base 2x square by 2, it has to lie between minus 1 and 1. This is the first condition. The second condition is, x square by 2 has to be greater than 0. So, from the second condition, we can write, x square is greater than 0, which is true for 
x belongs to any real value except 0. Is it clear? If x takes 0, then 0 will not give you greater than 0. Therefore, x equals to 0 is not considered. Therefore, from x squared by 2 greater than 0, we are having that x belongs to any real value except 0. Now, let us come for the first condition. Box of x, if it lies between minus 1 and 1, then we can easily say that x is lying between minus 1 and 2. Therefore, log base 2 x squared by 2 is lying between minus 1 and 2. So, x squared by 2 will be, is it clear? That implies, so from here we can write, or x is lying between minus root a to minus 1. Is it clear? Therefore, the required domain will be the common region between this and this. Therefore, our final answer will be x belongs to is it clear to all of you? So, this is our final domain for this given function. Okay.